Okay, let's, uh, let's unpack this. Welcome to the deep dive. Today, we're taking a closer look at something you might think is pretty straightforward. Abrasive grit. Mm -hmm. You know, the little particles on sandpaper, sharpening stones, polishing paste, the stuff that, well, cuts or polishes surfaces. Mm -hmm. But when you really zoom in, especially looking at this chart you've shared with us, um, it gets surprisingly complex. It really does. So the source material for this deep dive is this, frankly, incredible chart. It compares abrasive grit standards across a whole range of systems. We're talking traditional sandpaper classifications, sharpening stone ratings, industrial abrasives. It's all in here. Yeah. It's a pretty dense grid. Lots of numbers, names, acronyms, and it immediately tells you there's more going on here than just a simple number on the back of a product. Right. So our mission in this deep dive, mm. to navigate this chart alongside you. We want to make sense of the different standards listed here, figure out how they stack up against each other or you know where they totally diverge, and really pull out the key insights so you can look at any abrasive product and have a much better idea of what its grit number actually means, regardless of the label. And that's precisely the challenge, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's what this chart helps us get our heads around. Because for decades, different industries, different regions, uh, different manufacturers, they all develop their own ways of classifying abrasive particle sizes. Right. Makes sense. Think about, I don't know, sharpening stones used by woodworkers versus automotive sandpaper or maybe industrial grinding wheels. They needed standards, sure, but those standards just evolved independently. And this chart kind of lays bare the result of that history. You end up with this landscape where the same number can mean very different things. Understanding the standard becomes just as important as the number itself. It really highlights the core problem, just comparing different abrasive products based on their labeled grit number, fundamentally unreliable. Okay, so Let's dive into the chart itself. The very first column, micron, immediately stands out. That looks like maybe the universal translator here, representing the actual physical size of the particle. Exactly. That's spot on. The micron, or micrometer, it's a unit of length, tiny, a millionth of a meter. And in the context of abrasives, yeah, it's basically the diameter of the individual cutting or polishing particle. Okay. So this column gives us that common reference point, because while the standards might label a particle size as, say, 80 or 1 in 50 or maybe X220, the micron column tells you, okay, that particle is actually around 200 microns or 100 microns in size. You mentioned standards like JIS, that's the Japanese Industrial Standard, ANSI, the American National Standards Institute, and FIPA, the Federation of European Producers of Abrasives. Well, they develop their scales based on different measurement methods like sieving particles through screens, for instance, and often for different applications. So the chart just uses the micron size to try and line them all up as best as possible. Right. Okay, let's start at the top then. The top of the chart shows the largest micron numbers. Mm -hmm. We see entries around, what, 269, 260, 218, 201 microns. These are the big guys, the coarse grits. Yep, the heavy hitters. This is where you begin when you need to remove a lot of material quickly. Think right. aggressive grinding, initial shaping, maybe getting rid of significant surface imperfections or scale from forging, that kind of thing. Okay, and immediately you see it. The numbers under the different standards start to, well, diverge wildly for roughly the same particle size. Look at the row for 201.00 micron. Under the European FEPE standard, you said P is for coated abrasives like sandpaper. That's right, yeah. Okay, so under FEPE P, you see P80, but then under Trizact, which you mentioned is a 3M standard, often using structured abrasives, mm -hmm. you see X220. And under 3M PSA, another 3M line, it's A300. Mm -hmm. So P80, X220, A300, all classifying a particle size around 200 microns. Wow. Oh, yeah. And that tells you right away, if you're following instructions that say, you know, start with an 80 grit, you have to know which standard they're talking about. Oh, okay. An American CMI 80 grit, which is actually listed a bit higher on the chart, isn't quite the same physical size as that FEPA P80. So even in this coarse range, using an X220 Trizac instead of a FEPA P80 mm -hmm. could give you a different cutting speed or maybe a different scratch pattern, even if the core particle size is sort of similar. Mm -hmm. The standard often implies more about the whole abrasive system than just the particle size alone. Interesting. Okay. Moving down the chart then into that mid-range, maybe the sweet spot for a lot of work. We're looking now around 125, 182 micron. This feels like where you transition from rough shaping to refining the surface, maybe getting ready for finishing steps. Exactly. You've done the heavy lifting. Now you're cleaning up the surface, getting rid of the coarser scratches. And here, here's where it gets really interesting, I think. Look at the row for 100 
0.000 micron. Under fat bio biopsy, it's P150. Okay. Under mold master, it's just 150. Atoma calls it 140. Trizact is X100. And 3MPSA is A130. That's 150, 150, 140, 100, 130, all for basically a 100 micron particle. This single row is a perfect illustration of the confusion, isn't it? It absolutely is. And this is probably the most critical takeaway. This chart just screams at you. Never, ever compare grit numbers across different standards blindly. Right. If someone tells you to sharpen a knife or sand a piece of wood up to 400 grit, you absolutely must know which 400 grit they mean. Like you said, this chart shows a FEPA P400 is around 36 microns, but a SAMI 400 is around 45 microns. Hmm, quite a difference. That 9 micron difference. It might not sound huge, but for many applications, especially as you move finer, it's the difference between getting the surface finish you want or not. You could easily end up using an abrasive that leaves a coarser finish than you intended or spend forever trying to refine a surface with something that's actually too fine because the number misled you. Yeah, I can see that. I also noticed a few little notes pop up in some cells. Things like cell as a known value, cell as an approximate value, or cell as a compound. What's that about? Uh, yeah, those notes are basically the chart's way of giving us a bit more context about that specific data point. Known value likely means that particular standard has a defined particle size or maybe a narrow range that corresponds precisely to that grit number. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Approximate value suggests, well, it's the closest equivalent the chart maker could determine based on the available data. Maybe the standard defines a broad range, or the conversion between measurement methods isn't exact. Right. Makes sense. In compound, that could mean a few things. Maybe that specific entry in the standard isn't really a single grit size, but represents a product or a system that involves a mix of grits. Or maybe it's just a descriptor that's not a pure grit number classification in the same way. It just highlights that even within this chart, trying to create equivalence, the precision and the very nature of the entries can vary. It reflects the differences in how the standards themselves are constructed. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, let's make our way down to the bottom of the chart now where the micron numbers get really tiny. 30, 15, 5, all the way down to 0.25 micron. This is the realm of fine finishing, lapping, getting those mirror polishes. Yeah, this is where things often shift again. You see abrasive standards change or new ones appear that are sp specifically designed for this ultra fine work. Mm -hmm. And the numbers, well, they just skyrocket. They really do. JIS continues its numbering. FEPA F, that's F for fine abrasives, right? Mm -hmm. Often loose powders or pastes. Okay, FEPA F goes way up to F1200, F1500. Then you suddenly see these brand-specific standards for sharpening stones and polishing systems with numbers in the thousands. Yeah. Shapton, hashtag 30,000, listed at 0.49 micron. Chisera, hashtag 16,000, at 0 0.92 micron. That's quite a leap. Mm -hmm. Even names you might recognize in sharpening, like DMT and Spyderco, they appear down here with descriptors like extra fine or colors like yellow, which the chart then links to specific micron sizes, like 3.00 micron for that DMT example. It's fascinating how the numbering scales just change so drastically, isn't it? Yeah. Going from, you know, 150 or 400 grit in the mid-range to numbers in the thousands or tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. It really highlights how the purpose of the abrasive shifts dramatically at these really small sizes. You're no longer removing material in visible chunks. You're working at a microscopic level, really refining the surface texture. And some of these fine grit entries, they also include colors or materials, right, in their descriptions. I saw 1,200 green, 600 gray, ceramic, diamond, fine, copper. What's going on there? Well, based purely on how they're presented in the chart, those descriptors seem pretty significant. They could indicate specific product lines or maybe color coding systems used by a particular brand, like you see with Shapton or Chisera Stone sometimes. Uh -huh. Or maybe more fundamentally, they could specify the actual abrasive material used at that point in the standard or the product range. Because at these fine levels, the material of the abrasive itself, whether it's diamond, ceramic, aluminum oxide, whatever, plays a huge role in how it cuts and polishes. Right. So including it along Inside the size kind of makes sense. It shows that classifying these really fine abrasives often requires more information than just a number. It's about the whole system. And the so what then? For working down these super fine grits, why does this precision matter so much here? Well, at these incredibly small particle sizes, tiny differences matter immensely. A micron or two difference in size. Or maybe whether the particle is shaped slightly differently, which isn't explicitly in the chart, but is implied by different systems like those structured trizact abrasives we saw earlier, that can be the difference between a hazy, dull surface and one that reflects like a mirror. 
So precision and classification, knowing what you're actually using, becomes absolutely critical if you're trying to achieve specific high-quality finishes or polishes. Okay. So bringing this whole deep dive together, yeah. this chart is obviously much more than just a list of numbers. It feels like a powerful tool precisely because it reveals this fundamental inconsistency, this non-uniformity in abrasive grit standards. It truly is. I think the main undeniable insight is exactly that. You absolutely cannot rely on the number alone when comparing abrasives unless you are cer really certain they adhere to the exact same standard. This chart uses that micron column as the closest thing we have to a universal anchor. It lets you see, okay, what actual physical particle size is associated with a given number within a specific standard. That's the key. And for you, the listener, why does wading through all this, yeah. this complexity, why does it matter? Because whether you're a woodworker aiming for that perfect finish or a chef keeping your knives razor sharp, maybe a car detailer polishing paint, or even working in manufacturing, using the right abrasive is crucial. It's about getting the results you want efficiently and effectively. Right. Relying on inconsistent numbers just leads to frustration, wasted time, maybe ruined work pieces, and definitely suboptimal finishes. Understanding this chart, or at least the principles it reveals, helps you decode those labels. It helps you compare products more accurately, maybe using the micron size as your guide where possible, and lets you select the right abrasive for the job. It moves you beyond guesswork to, well, knowledgeable application. It's a direct path to gaining knowledge quickly but thoroughly in this specific and, yeah, surprisingly complex area. So we've navigated the, uh, the intricate world of abrasive grit standards. Mm -hmm. Using this chart as our guide, and uncovering the important differences hidden beneath those similar looking numbers. We have. And having explored how differently the size is classified across all these standards, here's maybe something to leave you with to think about. We saw that some entries on the chart also include information about the abrasive material, things like ceramic, diamond, and so on. Yeah. So given that, how much do you think the type of material the abrasive is actually made from influences the final surface finish and the cutting action compared to just its stated particle size according to these varied standards. In other words, does a 10 micron diamond particle really behave the same way as a 10 micron ceramic particle, even if the chart happens to list them both at that size under different systems? Something to consider. Mm. That's a great point to ponder as you maybe look at your own abrasives next time. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into the surprising depths of something as seemingly simple as grit. Keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep making sense of the information around you.